With all of the attention around AMD right now, I decided to do a little bit of a project while I work on other videos. How would an AMD Ryzen CPU perform with just two cores? Ok, so this test was done by running my R5 1600 with two cores and four threads. The CPU does feature the full amount of cache so do bear that in mind when trying to make conclusions from these results. However, it has been shown to only make a modest difference here or there in terms of gaming. So we already know that AMD's SMT works better than Intel's hyperthreading in virtually all cases, which should help the CPU perform better in games, unlike the Core i3s and the Pentium G4560 which both use hyperthreading. It is paired with an AMD Fury which is way more than capable of running all these games at these higher settings. But anyways, let's move away from all that for a moment and hop into some benchmarks. Firstly, in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds with medium and high settings enabled in 1080p with 120% resolution scaling, we saw a return on average of 45 FPS. But do factor that does contain the airplane segment, which is very demanding for pretty much every CPU out there. When you're actually on the ground, it would hover from 50 to 60 FPS, and the game can utilize up to 6 threads, apparently, but mainly prefers to use just 4. Which is useful for the CPU, as it was utilized 100% the entirety of the time playing. However, as good as the SMT is, it doesn't make up for a lack of two physical cores. Still, with 1% lows down to 20 FPS and 0.1% lows down to 10 FPS, it wasn't too bad to play with relatively little hitching to show. The game could slow down a tad, but really it wasn't that noticeable. I played a few games and each time it was similar. On the plane it would be a little bit juttery, which is to be expected with all the details being loaded in. However, once you're on the ground, the game was absolutely fine. You could drop the settings or the resolution to remedy this issue, but I'd rather play with these averages and these settings just to get the best experience. Secondly up we have CSGO, which really likes to use cores 0 and cores 1. So it's no wonder that in 1080p with low settings selected and shadow set to high, we saw a solid 241 FPS, which is buttery smooth to use with 1% lows of 140 FPS and 0.1% lows of 101 FPS, the game was well flawless, as getting over 100 FPS at all times in competitive games like this is generally a must for most players that actually want to get into a competitive nature. Personally I'm fine with 60, but I know a lot of these guys, they like to see over 100 FPS as a minimum. I had no problems playing it and it really shows how well a dual core system can hold those esports titles. For maybe an APU base or something it might be something to work with in the future, However, it just works for low-end gaming, I suppose. GTA 5 is a game that is very good at utilizing multiple cores, but also scales well down to working on fewer cores. 52 FPS was seen to be our average when driving through the city, with a mixture of high and ultra settings enabled in 1080p. This was smooth and playable and generally fine, especially with free sync enabled. Dropping some of the CPU demanding settings would push you over 60 FPS on average, however I wanted to test with my normal settings that I usually run at, and I could quite happily play this permanently, and frame times weren't bad at all especially when you look at the 1% and 0.1% lows. But then again, this is only two cores at work here, so I'm pretty respectful of the performance we're getting. A game that I'm rather new to benchmarking here with Wolfenstein 2 with the high settings enabled yielded us a remarkable 172 FPS on average with TXAA disabled. It didn't stray too far from this though throughout the entirety of the first level which was available in the demo hence the benchmark and our 1% lows saw 162 FPS on average with 0.1% lows down to 160 FPS so I definitely say it's safe to experience this game on this processor as it was extremely smooth. In the later stage of the game though it may change slightly and this game is optimized for using a lot of cores, so starving it by only giving it 2 cores and 4 threads just seems a little bit bad to do. However you could definitely up the resolution to 4k with this as I doubt that will increase the CPU load at all, and as long as you aren't too harsh with the CPU based settings you might be able to increase a few options to ultra. Finally, to follow up with our last game we have Forza 7 running with the high preset, which scores us a pleasant 75 FPS average. 
This is of course limited, but it stuck to it throughout the entirety of the benchmark and a couple of races. This was run with a recent DirectX 12 GPU, which helped spread the load over the full CPU, as if you're not running a DirectX 12 capable graphics card, I believe your processor will have to emulate some of the features which could slow it down. So gaming wise it was flawless in most games, as 1% lows of 70fps and 0.1% lows of 64fps aren't bad in a very recent game. Of course I wanted to see how it fared in some benchmarks so I fired up VR Mark's Orange Room in order to simulate a VR experience, which saw an average frame rate of 121.62fps which is way above the target of 109 FPS required to actually pass the benchmark. However, this was still 40 FPS short of what was achievable with all 6 cores enabled, as well as being a little bit less smooth as compared to when we had 6 cores enabled. In terms of practical usage however, the PC was a little slower when multitasking, but not necessarily bad. Of course we are comparing this to a full 6 cores, so that's sort of one sided there. Nothing unusable, but not quite as snappy. You can still get away with recording your gameplay, stream, running Discord and all those kind of things. I did finally test video transcoding, which took 11 minutes in order to convert a 350MB file to H.265 encoding. Compared with the 3.5 minutes that it took to convert all 6 cores, it's not ideal, but it's still not a bad amount of time considering the file type. So what does this actually show or tell us? Well, not actually that much. It does give us a nice insight into how well a 2 core Ryzen chip would theoretically hold up, and it also shows us how well the SMT implementation is on these chips, and that 2 cores aren't quite dead yet on the gaming scene provided you have some form of hyper-threading. But really though, most games were pegged at 100% usage where they would like 4 real cores, and I'm glad that 4 cores is becoming the minimum offering for CPUs. It really goes to show that even on a 4 core Ryzen chip, you can still dedicate 2 of your tasks to your game and another 2 to streaming or rendering. If this is what 2 cores are capable of, then what are 4 cores capable of? What are 6 cores capable of? It really is innovative to see what 2 cores can be dedicated to, while the other 2 work quite heavily in the background. As someone that's always rendering on their Ryzen 5, it's nice to see that I can just dedicate 4 cores to the render and 2 cores to my game and still have a perfectly fluent experience. And I enjoy the multitasking, it's nice to be able to watch a video and game or get up to tons of other tasks at the same time. I hope you found this as interesting as I did as it's nice to see what I can get up to while doing other things on my processor by just restricting it down to two cores to see what they can be doing or push to their limit. Thank you very much for watching and good night. So in case some of you have been wondering and didn't catch me in my previous video, I had actually filmed 4 or 5 videos, but I lost the footage due to a bad SD card reader, which has since been destroyed pretty nicely. There's plenty of videos coming and I've been filming a lot more too.